Hey everybody, welcome back to FilmRT, I'm your guy Trevor Baker, and today we're going to talk about what the Centerverse could have looked like if Warner Brothers had chosen to stick with it. If you haven't heard, or you're living on a rock, which I know I say all the time, there was a multiple year campaign that after Josh Whedon's version of the Justice League came out, that this legendary, rarefied mythos of the Snyder Cut be released. I don't know how it got found out. I don't know if Zack Snyder himself sent it out to some friends that there's a completely different movie that existed. But basically, fans caught wind of it and for years berated Warner Brothers to release the true Justice League film. Eventually, Warner Brothers gave in to the peer pressure, and I'm so thankful, although I don't condone peer pressure, that this one time we got what we asked for. The Snyder Cut was released, and although the pandemic was really hard, it did kind of have the perfect storm for them to give VFX producers, different animators, an opportunity to have some work during troubling times and finish the Snyder Cut. And it was pretty good, and Warner Brothers is feeling pretty good about themselves because they finally get the monkey off their back to release the Snyder Cut, but also uh, they got a whole bunch of HBO Max subscribers, so it seemed like a win-win, except there was an unexpected result. The fans were like, well, that was pretty good. Actually, it was really good. Me as a fan was like, that, that was very good. Why don't we get the Snyderverse back? And yes, that's the new outcry from the internet mob. Restore the Snyderverse. Now, reports about Harry and Cavill leaving and amongst many other things, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. But today, let's go down a little trip of imagination lane, hypothesis, stasis, and theorize what this could have looked like. Now, this isn't necessarily solely about what I've read or what the there's been some indications of what it'd be. I think this is more what I think would be a good streamlined storyline for the Snyderverse. So let's get started. First through first, let's set a quick foundation that everything prior to Snack Snyder Justice League is canon, not just Whedon. So we'll throw that in the trash because it sucks. It was not good. You got Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Waterman, Aquaman. Throw that in there. I don't know if that was before or after, but throw that one in there. So those are all canon. Now, what I think would be absolutely critical in the streamlined version, trust me, I would love to bring in all these other characters, but really Shazam doesn't tie into the Snyderverse very well, and instead of bringing people like Blue Beetle and all that quite in yet, let's talk about the standalone films that would need to happen to add depth to an already pretty dark and eerie story that Zack Snyder was laying out in some of the scenes you see in the Zack Snyder Justice League. The first movie, which Zack Snyder already talked about in his Vanity Fair interview, is the Cyborg movie, standalone movie. Since I don't think we would get a Wonder Woman or some other standalone movies like a Superman movie, Wonder Woman would be a great character to bring into the Cyborg movie because Cyborg would be struggling with the new reality that he's kind of this modern day Frankenstein. He has all these abilities. He's quite frankly, probably the strongest and most dangerous Justice Leaker, except for like Superman. And he's having to cope with like, what is the barriers, lines and boundaries of his new abilities? Cause he can tap into anything wire in anything and control almost anything and i think a key point of all of the standalone movies is still tying in that almost every person that these standalone movies would be about had a premonition of the future that's potentially coming which is the nightmare realm so cyborg not only is trying to learn to use his new abilities he's also trying to cope with like what he saw when he resurrected superman I think Water Woman would be able to help him navigate that, but I think a really cool villain to bring in would be Anomaly. Now, Anomaly is like Cyborg or very similar. I think actually you can make him out of the mother boxes as well. I'm not exactly sure how that would pan out, but what I think would be cool is that not only would Anomaly be similar to Cyborg, but he also would have the same premonition that Cyborg has is that there is a apocalyptic reality that is out there and his programming or his ability to tap into anything similar to Cyborg, he thinks the solution to this is taking control of the world, taking control of the future with all the abilities that they have access to. And actually now they're trying to recruit Cyborg in this effort. What I like about this is it's conflicting morals I figure about where do we draw the line of what we're able to do and what we should do. And I think Anomaly is perfect for a really interesting standalone Cyborg movie. And I would hope the movie culminates in at least one thing, please one thing, is that Cyborg would get armor that's a little bit more authentic to the comic because it kind of looks like a ridiculous metallic prism right now. 
Before we continue our video, I just want to let you guys know that we have a really cool Instagram that updates on a regular basis. So if you like all things Marvel, this is the Instagram for you. So go follow that LMRT Instagram right now. You won't regret it. I promise you. Seriously, open Instagram right now and click that follow button. Now back to the video. So. After that movie, we would need the Flash movie. Now, you can keep the same cast that's already slated for the Flash movie that we're supposed to get, which I believe is Michael Keaton for sure, Ezra Miller for sure, and I believe Ben Affleck is in that as well. This movie, I think, would be similar to Cyber, where Flash is also navigating his powers as well, since he's starting to access the ability to do time travel. But, of course, he probably can't control that, and I think it's going to have effects on him where he can see multiple timelines. I know there's rumors of how Flashpoint would tie into this. All in all, the movie's crux would be about them trying to navigate Ezra Miller's ability to travel time, and maybe in doing so, they end up get running into Michael Keaton, future Batman, bring him back somehow. I like the idea that Michael Keaton's actually kind of bad, or like a bad version of Batman, like a multi-dimensional, altered timeline bad version, maybe even the Batman who laughs. I know it's a big character to bring in, but it's a really interesting plot point, and maybe that Michael Keaton seems normal, but in fact, he's actually very evil which would make a pretty interesting standalone Flash movie, but once again, tying in the Easter eggs that they're trying to avoid this future nightmare realm or reality. The next standalone movie that would need to happen, I believe is a Batman one. We haven't really got a Batman standalone movie, and this movie would be really focused on the relationship between Batman and Jared Leto's Joker. We got an alluding in the Justice League Snyder Cut version that Jared Leto and Batman I don't know why I keep saying Jared Leto, but Joker and Batman have a dark history, and it's just the really popular comic story point of Jared Leto actually killing Robin. I don't know if this would happen exactly in this movie, but it would definitely flesh that out a little bit more. I'd love to see some Arkham Asylum in there, and I would like to explore how Batman feels like he's carrying the whole weight of the world on his shoulders because he's the one who's having these premonitions, and he's still trying to blazing forward, and in trying to create this Justice League, he doesn't realize that in doing so, he's actually moving the timeline towards this nightmare realm. Also, although I'm not necessarily saying that this is the crux, I think there should be some kind of love triangle where he, him, and, him and Lois are developing some kind of feelings for each other. And the Lois is with Superman because this will play into the next film. The next film would be the second Justice League movie. You need those three standalones to create the depth so when things happen and emotional loss happen, they carry more weight because too many movies rush it and you don't care if a character goes, dies, or has something happen to them. In this second Justice League movie, you have Darkseid finding Earth, and I do believe halfway through, like half of this movie is actually Darkseid succeeding and getting the anti-life equation and setting forth the apocalypse. Now, in this movie, the Justice League will have found a way to survive the anti-life you know, equation so he, they don't get decimated like you see in the Justice League movie, but they do indeed fail. I don't know why Superman doesn't succeed, but that would be for the story writers to figure out, but it, Darkseid does, is victorious. The Justice League have to regroup and make another full-fledged effort to stop Darkseid and this apocalypse that he's wrought on the world. Now, everything seems like it's on the up and up, but this movie would end in quite the turnaround cliffhanger surprise ending that actually Superman defeats Darkseid, but in doing so, Darkseid ensured that Lois Lane would get killed. And so much in a way that would be so... Either Darkseid implants a thought that Batman and Lois Lane were having an affair or that Lois, somehow it would be so significant that it would break Superman to the point that not only is he broken, he would turn evil. He would kill Darkseid, becoming kind of this malicious killer. He would declare himself some ruler of the Earth and the universe because clearly no one else is deemed fit to protect. And he would become an all overreaching dictator of Earth. And that's where that movie would end. The next movie would start with maybe like a little series of 15, 20 minutes of superheroes getting killed by Superman, showing that he's clearly not an easy person to defeat. Actually, he finds himself to be quite formidable. This would lead Flash, Batman, Mira, Deathstroke, Joker, Cyborg, that little crew of cohorts who see at the end of the Zack Snyder Justice League band together to figure out a solution on how to stop Superman. I think in this movie, they would realize that actually stopping Superman is not really a viable option. In fact, the premonitions and all the things they've been experiencing are actually things that they have been sending themselves 
these premonitions from other timelines, all for them to culminate to this moment where they realize we have to make a decision. We have to determine where does this all, when does the timeline bend towards this nightmare reality? And we have to change that. And Superman's obviously trying to stop their efforts and eliminate the remaining superheroes who choose not to serve him. I have three endings for this that I hypothesize. One for a typical superhero ending, one that's kind of a moderate romantic heartbreaking ending, and one that's kind of a dark ending. So tell me if you like these. These aren't fleshed out by Zack Snyder at all, but hey Zack Snyder, feel free to use them. And the superhero ending, this would be typical is that at the crux of where Darkseid's getting defeated, Lois Lane doesn't die. Uh, then they can use the anti-life equation to set everything back into place. I think maybe Batman sacrificing his life and to make sure this effort is successful would be really good and critical for this point. The second ending is actually making sure Superman and Lois don't ever meet or ever develop a relationship or feelings for each other. This is kind of more romantic and sad, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Lois Lane is the liability in Superman's life. Superman would have been Superman without Lois Lane, although she grounds him a good bit and inspires him, keeping them forever meeting and developing feelings for each other, removes the liability or this volatility. It's like a stock, like a volatility stock. All of a sudden, that if something happens to her, Superman can bend evil. Because clearly, if she's the key and that's what's being said, then removing her from ever being potentially that key keeps this reality forever existing. The final ending and the one that I like, which is kind of dark and really eerie, is, you know, the theory that would you go back in time and eliminate a historical figure that caused a lot of terror in history? This is the same concept that Batman realizes that really the, the reason that all of these things have come to be, and when you think about it, it's actually true, is when Superman came to Earth. And so you have to not have him escape Krypton and actually pass with the rest of the Kryptonians. This is really dark and actually hard to process, but think about it. Superman is the reason that Zod shows up to Earth. And Superman being the reason that Zod shows up to Earth, then Zod dies. What happens is that when Zod dies, Lex Luthor takes Zod's dead Kryptonian body and creates Doomsday. Doomsday kills Superman. What happens with Superman when he gets killed? He sends out the earth-shattering god wave. And it wakes up the mother boxes. The mother boxes bring Steppenwolf to Earth. And when he finds the mother boxes, he also goes like, oh, guess what? This is where the anti-life equation is. Hey, yo, Darkseid, you should come here. And so by the end of Justice League, Darkseid knows that Earth has the anti-life equation. And he starts his universe, you know, wielding destruction plan to find Earth and find the anti-life equation, which he does. Does bring about the apocalypse thus killing Lois Lane, thus bringing evil Superman. So how do you keep from all these things setting motion? Since clearly before Superman, Darkseid had been unsuccessful finding this planet because he's gone so many. He's like, I don't know where it is. It's like losing your keys. Like I just gave up, bought new keys, got a new ID. So the solution would be eliminate Superman from the timeline and you eliminate these things. It's really, I don't know. Obviously this is not the superhero ending we would want, but at the same time, think about it. This is Zack Snyder we're talking about, and I definitely could see him going a more eerie route, a more route. And I like the idea that actually one of these or some of these members of the Just League remember the decision they made to make sure he doesn't exist in the reality any longer. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you didn't like what I postulated, come comment in below and tell me how you think the streamlined Snyderverse should play out, what you would like to see, and if those endings highlighted or resonated with you, Tell me in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later.